Welcome to another gauge demo from FIPGauges.com. Today I'm going to show you my updated EGT gauge and uh, we'll start off with the buttons. So the S6 button that will change the engine selection. So it's currently outputting as engine number one. I've only got a Cessna at the moment, so it's only going to show one engine. But if you've got multi-engine aircraft, you can press S6 and it will toggle around the available engines. If you want to show all of the engines at the same time, then you can long press the S6 button and you'll see that each needle will have a number on it indicating the engine number. I've only got the one engine, so it's only showing the one needle at the moment. But you will have a needle per engine. And again, if you long press S6, that will turn off the multi-needle mode. Okay, so the S5 button, this will toggle the ranges that are available for the gallons per hour. So currently there are 11 different ranges, and each time you press the S5 button, it will toggle through the available ranges. Um, just in case your uh, aircraft is a little bit more hungry for fuel, you might want to actually increase the range of this gauge. So I'm currently on a Cessna 172, and it just bips over 16, so I'm going to go up to the next one, which will just keep me in there. So if I full throttle now, we should see that that won't actually top out the top of the gauge. And as you increase the gauge range, you can see the needle drops. And if we go back to the start, you can see it's a little bit over the top, so I just need to go down one. There we go. Okay, so the S1 button is used in the menus for exiting and also for entering the preview mode. I'm going to show you that in a moment. So on the main gauge itself, we have the ambient outside temperature. This can be displayed in centigrade and Fahrenheit. That can be changed in the menus. And we have an alternative display for the EGT as well. On the main gauge, we have gallons per hour as the fuel flow. And we have the EGT temperature itself. So the EGT has to be calibrated. So what we have to do is we have to put the aircraft on the ground. We have to full throttle. And then we have to wait for the EGT needle to settle down. And then we have to use the left dial to calibrate the EGT. So as that gets higher, we're going to start calibrating the needle. And I need to bring that down. So we just rotate this dial. And that will then start to calibrate the needle. And what you want to do is you want to get the needle on the little asterisk. And then when it settles, you'll then know that's the right calibration setting. It's still climbing a little bit. You'll need to leave the throttle to run for a little while before you can get it properly calibrated. But you get the general idea. Okay, so the right dial, indicated by the blue LED, activates the mini menu. So we'll activate the menu with the right dial, and the first option in here shows version and information. Also, it shows you the status of the virtual power mode, and the virtual power can be turned on and off using the S6 button, and that will turn the virtual power on and off for all gauges. If it's disabled, then all gauges will be uh, lit, and if it's enabled, it will be lit if you have power. Okay, the S1 button at this point will exit the menu. And we'll come back in. Now, when you move on to the next options, the S1 button changes to preview mode. This will basically hide the menu so that you can see what your left dial is doing when you make those changes. So at the moment, we're in the left sidebar page. So we can change between the normal function display and we can switch to a button sidebar. The labels can be programmed. Uh, within Spadon next, there's a separate tutorial for that. And the other option is to blank the sidebar completely. Now, if you want to preview this without seeing the menu in the way, you can just press the S1 button to put it into preview mode. The left eye will still be activating that particular menu function so that you can see what it does. And then press this one to go back to the menu. So we go to the right and then we go to the next option is degrees units. This is where you change the ambient temperature display from Celsius to Fahrenheit. The next option is the engine number. Again, we can select the engine number manually here. And this doesn't matter whether you've got um, multiple engines or not, it will select the engines. And you can see down here, this has gone red, because we don't actually have these engines, but it will allow you to select a different engine within the menu, unlike the button which will only toggle between the available engines but you do have this option here within the menus of selecting which engine you want as well. 
The next option is the floor fuel flow range. And you can change this with the left dial. And as I said, you've got 11 different ranges between zero and 14 and zero and 84. And I'll leave it on 21 for the Cessna 172. Next is the background style. Now there are multiple various styles of background for my gauges and this is global for all ga you change it and this gauge it changes it for all the others again you can just use the left dial to change the style of the gauge and if you want to see a little bit clearer you can go into preview mode and then you can change the gauge style as you like there's the old style with the two screws and the new style with the one screw plus you have the intermediate one where you've got nothing at all um personally i prefer the second one and next option is the glass reflections. So this is optional. You can turn the glass reflections on and off. This is global again for my gauges. You turn it on on one, it turns it on for them all. The next option is the brightness control. So you can change the brightness of the gauges. This won't have any impact on a VFIP, which is what you're seeing on the screen, but this will change the global brightness of all your physical FIPS. And last but not least, is the panel light function so this will like emulate colors for panel lighting so you've got the options of putting a, a yellow green blue and red overlay on the gauge to make it look like it's panel lit and again this affects all gauges and again we can either come out the menu by scrolling the left dial to the end until it turns off or when you get to the first option you can hit the s1 button to exit so i'm going to turn that panel back on and then come out of the menu. Okay, so that's the EGT gauge. I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. And don't forget to come back and check out some of our other gauge videos. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.